Hi there. In this video, I'm going to talk about views within Microsoft Project. So first of all, what is a view? Well, to, to understand what a view is, we need to think about what Microsoft Project is. So I like to think of Microsoft Project as a cross between an access database and Excel. All right, so there's a bunch of data in the background and we can show it on a table on the screen and it looks very similar to Excel. However, in the back end, there is information. So for example, we have task name here and a bunch of other information about a task. And I can add in other columns. I think this is a database of other columns. I can see the actual cost of a task as well. So it's an Excel with a bunch of other data. So think of it like that. That being said, now what is a view? Well, a view is a selection of screen elements that allows us to see the data within Microsoft Project displayed in various ways. It's generally, and I say generally because there are lots of exceptions to this, but generally a table on the left-hand side, this is called a table within Microsoft Project. This is kind of like your Excel. Then on the right-hand side, there'll be some kind of chart Involved with that view, you can have also a split. So we see we have the timeline view up here. Okay. Seems very, very complicated. However, we can move one of the splits away. And this is another split that we can move and get that out of the way. And now I'm just looking at a bunch of tables, just like I see in Excel, All right? So Microsoft Project can be as complicated or as easy as you want. A view allows you to see the data in different ways. Think of it like that. So one of my favorite views is the Gantt chart view. We're going to come back here now to the Gantt chart view. This is kind of like the standard view, the default in Microsoft Project. Within any view, you can add in additional columns. You can see here I've added in the baseline cost and you can remove those columns. You can bring the timeline back. You can see I pulled it all the way over. I can bring that back. Okay. So we have a table, we have a, a, a chart on the right hand side. That's a general rule. There are different types of views within Microsoft Project. And in fact, there's a whole ribbon dedicated to views within Microsoft Project. We have task views here. We see this subsection and we have resource views. Now I like to think of um, these different types of, th th there's task views and resource views, but I also think of another type of view, which is a assignment view. There's only two of those in Microsoft Project, the task usage view and the resource usage view. We'll come back to those. So this view you can see is made up of a table and the Gantt chart on the right hand side. You can also have a filter and a grouping associated with your view. Also within any given view, and this is the Gantt chart view and you see the name of the view on the left hand side, the tables are interchangeable. So if I like what I see right here, but I want a different table, I can come to the tables drop down and I can see this is the entry table. It's called entry. That's the default. It's useful for entering new tasks in Microsoft project because you've got the name, the duration, etc. I can also see the work happening. What's going on from a work perspective within my project. What's going on from a cost perspective within Microsoft Project. So this is the great thing about Microsoft Project is that access database in the background. Although we don't see it on screen, we can quickly access it. This is what makes Microsoft Project so much better and easier for managing projects and data than Excel, because it's all here at your fingertips. All right, so now that we've explored that, let's take a look at some of the more popular views that I like to use within Microsoft Project. Uh, so let's take a look at some of the task views. I'm going to cut, I've been into the tank, the, the Gantt chart. Let's take a look at the task board. As I said, I'm going to come back to these usage views. Let's take a look at the task board, completely different view. There is no chart on the right hand side. This is used for agile, right? So if you're using task boards, Kanban, anything agile, you can just drag the tasks around, do, 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 do like so. In the background, the other views are all updating because this is an access database. Everything you do in Microsoft Project has an effect. In fact, if I 
click on this particular task here and then switch back to the Gantt chart view, it will remember the task that I clicked on. You see it's highlighted. That one's now been marked as complete. See it's 100% complete on the Gantt chart. In fact, I don't see the, the, I think it's the indicators column there. We can insert that so we can see that. There it is. Any view you can change very quickly and easily, adding in any column you want. It will remember that for me as well. Next time I come back to this view, that will be there for this project. All right, so we've taken a look at the task board and we switch back to the Gantt chart. And you can see, you can switch back to and from these views to make life really easy to achieve what you want to see and what you want to do within Microsoft Project. Perhaps I want to filter this view to just see my critical tasks. Critical tasks in Microsoft Project are tasks that are considered to have no slack. They will push out the end date of the project if they slip. Milestones, great. So you can quickly and easily manipulate these views to see what you want to see. Now what we're seeing here is milestones, but also the associated summary tasks. Down at the bottom of here in the filter drop down, I can actually remove that. Boom, now I'm just seeing all of the milestones within my project within this view. There's not many, it would be much more difficult to do that in Excel, right? So that's the power of these views. That's why I'm dedicating a whole video to it. All right, so we've taken a look at the Gantt chart. Again, we keep coming back there. The task board, we've looked at that. Let's take a look at some of the other not so popular ones that you probably never clicked on before. Take a look at the network diagram. This is pretty cool. So we can see kind of like if we zoom out a network diagram of my project and the, the paths of the task through it. And in fact, you can see the uh, diamonds here are your milestone tasks. These tasks here are like the, the rectangles are your tasks. And um, the, uh, oh, got a bit of a bug there in my, it, it, the, the um, parallelograms are your summary tasks. So that's how you can see. And the red ones are critical, blue ones are non-critical from a uh, critical path standpoint. Okay, next one I want to show you is the tracking Gantt. All right, so if I come to other views, sorry, Gantt chart drop down, other views, tracking Gantt. Here we can see the tracking Gantt. This is another nice one. Similar to Gantt chart, but we have a different chart. Okay. You can see the actual um, the table being used here is actually the work table, I believe, but it's had some modifications as well. So we can see costs and things like that. It's using the work table. So you can see the percent complete of tasks and whether they're critical and the baseline of those tasks versus where we at today. So we, this one's running late compared to its baseline. Kind of nice. Let's take a look at the calendar view. So some people like to work in a calendar view. And you know, if you're a week to week and you've got lots going on, you can see a week view here. All right, so what's happening this week? You can skip through the weeks as you like. It's a nice view if you come in on a Monday morning and want to see what you've got going on for the week. If there's something not there, you probably need to update your schedule. All right, so I think we've looked at the task views. We're manipulating tasks and updating tasks and seeing what's going on with my tasks. I now want to look at the resource views. My number one hands down resource view that I use is the resource sheet. In here, you can see all the information about the resources on your tasks and uh, sorry for your project. And you can also add new resources in here. And this is the best place to come. I'm going to come in here and add Krista. The M to my project. She by default is a work resource. We can see all the information, how much she charges per hour. She charges about $57 an hour. And she's on the standard calendar and she does not have a call out fee. All right, so that's the resource sheet view. It's very easy to enter information about your resources. You don't need to manipulate it much. It's all there. You can also see high level, you know, if those resources are over allocated, things like that. I could also see how much that they're costing the project if I inserted the cost column. When you're looking at a resource, you always look, you're looking at the resource level. How much is this resourcing costing this project? 
So by the end of this project, we'll have paid Tom $447,000, right? At $60 an hour. That's a lot. Okay, uh, next one I want to show you is the team planner. I actually have a whole video dedicated to this. I'll show you at the end, but here's the team planner. Nice view to see what's going on with all of the tasks and the resources and what they're working on. So you can see on the left-hand side, the names of the resources. Krista hasn't got any jobs here. We can add permitting to Krista's list of things to do. Boom, she's assigned to that task. Jason, you can see he has some overlap of these tasks. You can drag them around, move them out, etc., to get a better understanding and a better forecast of what's going on. All right, that's the team planner view. It's a pretty nice view. Another one I want to show you is the resource graph view. This one's actually found under other views. In here, we can see over allocated resources and how badly they're over allocated. So over allocated means that they're working more than their calendar allows them to do. So most people work eight to five Monday through Friday, 40 hours a week. If you assign somebody to work more than eight hours a day or 40 hours in a week, they'd become over allocated. So you can see here 300%, which means Tom Henry has been assigned 21 hours work in a single day. That's not good. Um, yeah, so that's a, a nice another view there. You can see as we scroll through on the left hand side here, all the different resources, right? Like so. Krista is not doing too bad. She's 100% allocated, not over allocated at all. That's the resource graph view. All right, as promised, I want to show you those assignment views. So if you want to see the assignments and the detailed assignments within your project, a good place to come is the either the task usage or the resource usage. Let's start with the task usage. Here we can see all the tasks on the project and the resources that are working on them. So task, resources, task, resources. In here, you can actually use this outline and go to level one. I'm just going to see the tasks, right? And then the resources working on them. For some reason, travel and software must be at the same level as event planning from an outline number perspective. But all the rest of them are showing pretty good. So Olympic Village, I can expand this and see here. Tom's working on architectural design, as is Jason. On the right hand side, I'd be able to see their hours. And in fact, if I click on Tom Henry and click uh, scroll to task, boom, there it is. I can see hour by hour, how many hours they're working each day. You can actually come in here if you wanted and manipulate that and say, well, I was only going to work four hours that day, All right? And that work should get tacked on to the end or it, or it would um, decrease the number of hours of work overall, dependent on how that task is set up. So you can see it's actually decreasing the remaining work for that task. Okay, that is the task usage. Now, to flip that, we can go to the resource usage, usage where we see that all of the resources on the left-hand side and all the tasks they're working on. And we can see that over time. So it's another view. We'll play around with this one as well in a slightly different way. We can see the work here. So that's the forecasted work. We can also right-click where it says work and put in actual work. So we can see now the work that's actually been completed or marked as completed by those particular tasks. We could even see, if we wanted, the baseline work. Um, to do that, I think I need to click on Detail Styles and add in Baseline Work. This is another one I really like to see here, but it's not there by default. It's OK. Boom, now I can see the baseline work for any given task resource working on a task. Uh, 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 where are my tasks here? There we go. We can see the baseline hours. Baseline is the originally planned hours for that given task. So you see we're still planning to work four hours here, but not been done. So when you actually have two hours tracked, you can see, oh, we planned for four that day, got two done. Oh, well, we move on. Right. That is the task usage and the resource usage. These are great for figuring out what is the finite details of the assignments going on for the resources working on your project.